Hey guys, Ben here from Able Sending today to talk to you about monitor calibration, why it's important, why you should be doing it, and what you need to get started. So first though, let's talk about all the different display technologies out there. There's LCD, LED, white LED, OLED, and there's RGB OLED and white OLED, and there's many more out there, and they're all great in their own way, but there's a problem with all of them. And to show you that problem, I've set up some displays behind me. Let's go take a look. Okay, so I have a Sony Consumer LED, a, uh, a Panasonic LCD broadcast monitor, and a Sony broadcast monitor that's an OLED. And I've taken my pattern generator, I've sent the same pattern to all three through a DA. So, as you can see, they look a little bit different, right? So this one looks a little more green, especially over here, and this one looks way more blue, and then this one looks actually pretty bang on. But that's the problem with different display technologies, right? They're going to look inherently different out of the box. So then, what does that mean for content creation, right? Because if all these displays look different, how can you be sure that what you're seeing is what your audience is going to see later on down the line when they're watching it at home on their TV or their laptop? And then similarly, when you're watching your TV at home, how can you be sure that what you're seeing is what the director intended for you to see? It's a problem we get asked about a lot here at Able, and I think you could really call it a problem of miscommunication. Think about it like this. Let's say you have a friend who speaks French, a friend who speaks Spanish, and a friend who speaks Mandarin, and you all want to get together for coffee next week. Wouldn't it be nice if there was one language you could all speak so you could all understand each other? I mean, and that's the same thing that monitor calibration solves, right? Because monitor calibration really is just adjusting, measuring, and correcting your display to a mutually agreed upon video standard. And when we talk about video standards, we talk about Rec. 709 for broadcast TV, we talk about the DCI spec for cinema, and in the last two years or so we've heard about 4K UHD and HDR standards, and that's Rec. 2020 and Rec. 2100. So when you calibrate a display to a video standard, not only can you be confident that what you're seeing is what your audience is going to see, but you're going to have a better viewing experience, right? Because we don't calibrate in a vacuum. When we adjust brightness and contrast and backlight and gamma, we're doing it in part based on the environment of the display. So when you're done, not only can you be sure that your display will be accurate, but it's going to look more fine-tuned for the room that it's in. And th those are great reasons to calibrate. Another thing people ask us is, how often should I calibrate? And the important thing to remember here is that your display is going to drift over time due to aging. That's the nature of electronics. If you're doing color critical work, at minimum every six months you should recalibrate. Preferably every three months. And no matter who you are, definitely do it at least once a year. Okay, so what do you need to calibrate? Well, you can either hire a professional company like Able Cine, or you can build your own kit. And you really only need three things to calibrate. You need a meter to measure your display. You need a pattern generator to put test video signals on your display to measure. And then finally, you need some software to drive those two pieces of hardware and do the math to tell you what's going on. For meters, there's a couple that we like. We use the Spectrical C6 HDR a lot. It's great, it's really easy to use, and it's really affordable. It's great to hang off the back of your display. Then we have the Klein K10A, which is a great meter. Uh, I think of it really as the Cadillac of meters because it's so fast and so accurate. Uh, and it has this great long light gathering tube, which means you can get a little farther away from the display, which is really great when you're doing projectors. And then finally, we have the uh, X-Rite i1 Pro 2, which is a great spectrophotometer. It's actually different than these two, which are colorimeters, which means it's a little bit slower when you use it, but it's really accurate. So what we typically do is take one of these and either this one or that one out in the field together to get the best results. Okay, for pattern generators, you have a couple options. Uh, we use the Meridio 6G. It's a great hardware generator. It's HDR ready as well. Uh, the only thing is it has an HDMI port out, so if you want to go to a broadcast monitor, you'll need an SDI to HDMI adapter. If you don't want to use this, there's a lot of software options you can use. There's Calman's Virtual Forge. You can also use DaVinci Resolve or Avid with Calman. And then finally, you'll need software, right, to run everything. And we prefer using Spectrical's Calman. It's easy to use, but the nice thing is it can get really advanced if you need it to. Okay, one more quick tip. If you buy a brand new display, it's really important to let it break in before you calibrate for the first time. For LEDs and LCDs and projectors, we recommend about 40 to 60 hours, and then for OLEDs, about 100 hours. If you don't let it break in, you're just going to have to recalibrate the week after you calibrate it, so make sure to let it break in. So that's a quick look at monitor calibration and what you need to calibrate, and you should be calibrating. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.